Merry Christmas again, because after all, this is a chapter everybody, most people like. One Piece, uh, chapter 693. Mm, the uh, Please Die, I think it was called. One of the few chapters I actually remember the name of. Well, first, the cover page. Well, co not cover page. Well, we see Straw Hats and, and the Heart Pirates. Everybody except John Bart. Mm. I wonder why. Is he dead? Well, seeing that we see the rest of the uh, Lost Pirate crew, I wonder... Maybe they're not dead after all. I actually wondered. Are they dead? Yeah, I know what you're trying to say to me now. Didn't you just repeat that three times? Bad grammar, okay? Anyways, that's not what I really was going to talk about. I was going to talk about the chapter, but it was something I was going to note first. We see many pictures of... Uh, peoples we have seen, rivals and uh, possible allies, many things, we don't know. And we see a uh, small picture of uh, uh, Akaino. It appears he has grown a beard or goatee or something like that. And then another thing, this one picture, we don't see that one's face, we only see that person's mouth. I think the question I, I'm trying to ask here is that Kaido or someone else? Mm. My guess is, is that was Kaido, but I'm tired of that. Anyway, the chapter uh, is that uh, Frankie Shogun sees more Baby Five and Buffalo and they begin to fight. And as usual, Frankie plays around because he can't be so much serious about that. He even takes forward a but he appears he shows more weapons in this Frankie Shogun than last time. Or is that in his real body? I have no idea. A cannon and a shield that he does not deflect with. He throws it. And Baby Five thinks that's so childish. And another thing. Doesn't that, res doesn't that resemble the Captain America throw shield attack? Huh. I wonder. Anyway, we see a little bit more also about Baby Five's Buki Buki no Mi. It appears at least one question got answered. She can transform her entire body into a weapon. A weapon with a mouth <laughs> and legs. She transforms into a huge saber. Buffalo uses her. She even Then she even transforms into a mess missile. Either way, that fight, uh, I don't know if it's going too well or too bad. Either way, Frankie plays around. Cesar wakes up, but he's too wounded to escape. He then he suddenly takes forward Smoker's heart. I wonder, is that Smoker's heart? And he um and he appears that he's gonna squeeze it until it bursts, saying, "I'm taking you with me, Smoker." And it appears also that Law gave up on uh, on, on finding Cesar. Instead, he tells everybody to get on the cart. Court to be and still scolds Luffy for m miss failing. I'm still wondering why didn't he just chase after Cesar? Did he know that it? it ha I guess he really must have planted a bomb on on this Pom Panka sword or something like that. Or maybe he knows something that Don Flamingo is gonna do. Uh, spoiler alert! But I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that later. If you, of course, not have already figured it out. Either way, <clears throat> he tells Luffy to hurry, but Luffy can't with all his nakama. But they all made it. Chopper and the Brooks group. 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 Ah! I fail the word again. Okay? <sighs> Anyways, we uh, see the... And uh, Momosuke see, uh, sees Kinemon too. And the strange thing is, he doesn't call him father. He just calls him Kinemon. I guess that really tells how he, how he looks at his father. He don't look at his father as father by name, but only by his real name. Is that how all the samurais, children and people from Wanokuni is, or does it just, just shows even more how prideful and stupid personality Momosuke has? <laughs>
probably, or maybe he doesn't even have a good relationship with his father. Maybe he's embarrassed by his father. Well, Kinemon has shown some badass movements, but yeah, I would be embarrassed if I had a father like that too. Uh, but yeah, maybe that's why uh, Momosuke stored on that ship. He wanted to get away from his father and prove he can be a real man. <laughs> it appeared that uh, Kinemon cares much about his son, but it's also from pretty desperate on protecting him. Maybe overprotectiveness. Anyway, they uh, drive off on the cart. Luffy is, of course, uh, happy as a pie because uh, uh, happy as a pie. <laughs> that wasn't even funny. He's happy. But Moonette has apparently escaped the gas and she's in a room. She contacts Don Flamingo and Don Flamingo tells her to go to a secret lab and press a button that will explode the entire island and Caesar will survive. Uh, Caesar will su Caesar Caesar uh, Caesar will survive because well he's made of gas and Monet is already there. And here's one thing you can always add. Uh, Don Flamingo apologizes for treating her badly and says, please die for me. And she says, yes, young master. I think if it wasn't already clear to more intelligent... Uh, I'm not intelligent, so I'm saying this in case other... I think more intelligent people than me already realized this, but... I think this chapter shows just how tight of a grip... Don Flamingo have on his pirate crew or subordinates level. I mean, they treat him like he's a god, or maybe a, a or maybe a noble or anything like that. Well, maybe not Baby Five, but you know what I'm trying to say. And I was a young master. It's almost like Monet is in love with Don Flamingo, and I would die for you. It's it's almost like they are brainwashed in serving him. I mean. She's throwing away her life. Is she doing that because of her humiliating defeat? Or is she doing that because, well, she really is a brainwashed washed child uh, that uh, cares for Don Flamingo in an obsessive way? Or, mm, yep. Well, anyway, I'm pretty sure that Don Flamingo is m manipulating his subordinates, so they are fiercely loyal to him, but not in Luffy and Straw Hat Pirate kind of way. Instead, just like a slave that doesn't know better. And she prepares to press the button. And the chapter ends there. Will they make it in time? It's a race against time. Well, the main characters must survive, but Frankie is still out there. Even though he is in this Frankie Chogan. And I guess... Uh, Don Flamingo's gonna sacrifice Buffalo or Baby Five too, or maybe he believes them are gonna grab uh, Caesar. Uh, one thing I'm actually wondering: C uh, Caesar has Smoker's heart, or as at least we know, is Smoker's heart, and now he's gonna press that until it bursts. Does that mean Smoker's gonna kick the buck next? But one thing I was wondering. What if that is not Smoker's heart? Yeah, I know, this is going to be useless once the truth comes out, but Law has become a pretty shrewd character and pretty intelligent. And Caesar may be intelligent, but he is stupid. In he, Law has fooled him. And he had Monet's heart, didn't he? He could have easily switched them, couldn't he? Right, that's what I'm meaning. What if that is not Smoker's heart? What if that is Monet's? And he's going to squeeze it and prevent her from pressing the button. Of course, that's probably not that way. Uh, I mean, Monet would probably feel if that was her heart. But anyway, is Smoker going to survive the heart clenching? Is the Straw Hats going to find out whatever they are traveling, by the way? Uh, and... Uh, and uh, are Monet, is Monet going to press that button to all to we all go poof? Well, we'll probably know in the next year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holiday. Bye.